Okay, welcome to another tutorial uh, on the uh, fluids and thinking particle six. Um, uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to cover uh, how to do um, an object fill, uh, how to pour uh, liquid into an object, uh, typical uh, pouring of uh, uh, liquid into uh, a cup or some kind of container, uh, just kind of ways to control that. So right now, I have nothing in the scene, nothing going on. Uh, this essentially is my container that I'm going to fill up. So I'm just going to call this container. Uh, this could be a beer glass, could be, um, you know, really whatever needs to be. And this is going to be my emitter. And this is going to be my distance point, which I'll get into in a little bit. So I'm just going to make this uh, into x-ray mode so we can actually see through it. Um, and let's begin. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up thinking particles. And I'm going to resize it a bit just so it can fit into the tutorial recorded window. And the idea behind this tutorial is not really to cover something very specific uh, exactly. Uh, it's more to give you an idea of how you would go about creating uh, this sort of effect and control. Um, that's why I'm using uh, just this arbitrary container here and just a simple plane for emission here. Um, keep in mind though, I'm using uh, the default scale and max. So if I go to my unit setup here, um, one unit equals one inch, uh, generic units. Uh, and this container is is not really to scale. So if I was going to say this was going to be like filling up a, a tall uh, beer glass or something like that, this is not uh, for that. Uh, in this case, this is a really tall vessel. Uh, it's over six feet tall. So when doing cups and things like that, small scale that are things that you're going to fill up, you're going to want to you know, model everything to scale, but you're going to want to scale up the geometry, you know, probably three to four, maybe even five times the size, uh, and then do a simulation on that size. Um, doing something at a really tiny scale is just, you know, hard to do. So in any case, uh, let's open up Thinking Particles and get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the black box that I use in another video tutorial uh, it covers just the flow groups in general. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a dynamic set here, and I'm going to load that black box um, called flow base, and we're going to start with that. So I'm going to bring this up to the top, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the things that we don't need. So um, I don't need any static uh, rigid bodies. Well, actually, I'll leave this to static rigid bodies. I don't need any floating rigid bodies, so I'll remove that group. I don't need it. Um, and I actually don't need the static rigid body as well. We can do things a little bit differently here. Under the create group, uh, I don't need uh, any of the bullet stuff at all. And matter of fact, I don't need the static rigid body here. Uh, I don't even need the active rigid body. All I'm going to use is the matter waves with the mass, and that's that's all I'm going to use. Our flow groups, I'm going to leave that here, and our forces, I'll leave that here for gravity and sim. Uh, I don't need any active boundaries, but I do need a static boundary. So I'll leave that, and I don't need a bullet physics solver. So this is really all we need. I'll get rid of that dynamic set. Okay, so in this case, uh, because all I want to, to do is have the fluid fall into the container and then fill up. So the only thing it needs to collide with is the container. So in our sim dynamic set, we have this boundary static. And in the last tutorial, we're using groups assignments here. But in this case, I'm not even going to use a group assignment. I'm just going to use the, the boundary node um, directly. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick Add and add my container. So now really at this point, um, I don't need to do anything else. Uh, because when the fluid starts flowing, if it touches the surface, it's going to collide with it. And what we want it to do is fill up. So from there, let's go back to our crate here where we have our matter waves. And just like I did in my other tutorial, I'm going to actually turn on our input visibility to on. So I can actually set a time interval quickly. I'll just hit tab and type in what I want, which is a time interval. And I'll just set it to, let's say, 50 frames. So this will just emit flu fluid for 50 frames, just so I can kind of control uh, what's going on here before we actually fill it up further. All right, so this is going to be emitting from our plane object here, which is our emitter. So let's go ahead and pick that. There we go. And that's already set to the fluid uh, group here. So really, at this point, if I play this down, we should get some fluid uh, like that. OK? So what I want to do now is I just want to give it a little bit of 
stuff going on here. First of all, I want this uh, these particles to live forever, so I'm just going to increase my particle lifespan here. And then what I'll also do is I'll give it some speed on my matter waves here. So let's just bring this up a bit. Uh, there we go. That's essentially what I want, is I want the fluid to come out and I'll give it some variation so it's not, yeah, okay. That's a good start. So what we want to see is basically what we're kind of getting here is we want the fluid to kind of shoot out and then pour and fill up our glass container here, okay? So first thing we need to do is that we need to adjust um, some properties in the fluid group. So uh, we're not using that many particles right now. If I play this down, and once all the fluid is emitted, we only have 5,300 particles, so not even 10,000 particles. So let me do, uh, instead of 2,500 per second, let's do 3,500 per second, just so we have a few more particles. And really for some kind of container vessel being filled like this, maybe 20, 30,000 is really kind of all you need. So let me do 6,500 per second. And that's probably fine for this tutorial. For right now, just to get started, you know, we're somewhere in the range of about 15,000 particles, whatever, and we're not emitting for that long of a frame duration. So, let's go down to our fluid groups here and talk about the flow group, which is going to be dialing in our properties uh, to get our fluid to behave as uh, we want it to. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off our pressure, so I'm going to display none. So I'm just going to get my particle color here, which let's change that quickly from the fluid gray to uh, something obvious like just a bright red so we can see that there we go great okay so the first thing I want to do is talk about um, when we're filling up the particles here first of all the stream that comes out of your emission whether it's uh, being emitted from a plane or you actually have another cup that's filled and you're pouring it directly into this other vessel uh, the fluid properties are going to be a little bit different um, so that you can control the stream the way it looks because right now it's just kind of this big stream coming through and then it hits and then down here at the bottom it doesn't really flow and col collect and splash and you know the behavior is a little different here so an easy way to control that is to set up a couple of flow groups here to do that so first of all this is going to be my flow group and I'm going to call this FG for flow group and I'm going to call this uh, pour because this is the group that I'm going to use to pour the liquid okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of go to a few frames and so we have some liquid flowing out here and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, play with the smoothing radius first so I'm gonna bring this down to a value of one and you can see the particles are getting uh, tighter together and if I bring this up to 20 they're gonna be spread out uh, even further apart so I'm gonna go to a value of one our decompressed value I'm gonna zero that out as well and um, if I go ahead and restart this and play this down, we're basically getting our particles to to flow out here. And what I want them to do is I want them to kind of hit um, in this range here, right, right around here in this corner of the glass is kind of where I want my particles to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to my matter waves and I'm just going to adjust my speed a little bit, increase it maybe 120, something like that. 115 yeah that's what I want I kind of wanted to pour out and then just kind of stream along the side of the glass here and kind of end up down here in this corner so we can kind of see that so that's kind of what I want and then now what I want to do is adjust the uh, pour group here because I want it to I want it to be tight together um, but I also want um, just a nice stream of particles uh, I don't want a lot of these loose particles kind of floating around. So if I adjust these parameters in here a bit, you're going to see that you know these are going to spread out. If I adjust my decompress a lot, they're going to spread out quite a bit. And as I adjust my smoothing radius, we're going to see, yeah, so 3 is too much. 2, uh, 2.5, something like that. Um, what I want to see is I want a nice grouping of particles kind of a smooth group of particles kind of flowing out. Um, and then what I want to do is I want them to be tighter together. So I'm just going to play with our decompress a little bit here. So that's kind of the, the fluid motion that I want coming out as my stream uh, to build up. Okay. 
So the reason why I'm doing this in two ways is because the behavior of once I get down into my glass and I want it to fill up, I want to really control um, the way this glass fills up. Trying to do it in one, one go here with just one emitter um, is uh, too much of a pain in the ass, to be honest. So uh, it's much easier if you just do it in two goes uh, because the fluid's all going to be simulated together. So uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a copy of this one and by just doing a shift drag out here in the TP window here. And I'm going to rename this one and it's not going to be pour, but it's going to be fill. And uh, what we'll do is we'll actually make another group here. So let's make another group here and call it, let's call this fill. So fluid fill. And I'll rename this one to, how about fluid, so we can be consistent here, fluid pour. There we go. And I'll make this one a subgroup so it can get the same gravity as that uh, because we have a gravity assignment down below here. So it's going to gravity. And that way, when I make another gravity assignment, fluid pour. So the fluid that we have here will be getting the same amount of gravity. Uh, so that's that. All right. So right now, if I play this down, we're not getting anything really except for the liquid pouring out. So in our groups, what we want to do is also let's change the colors here. So our fill group is going to be a different color. So let's make that just how about uh, let's say a bright, bright blue, so we can see that which particles are which. All right. So first of all, we're going to pour out. And then we're going to fill up using our fill group. If I play this down now, we're going to have a mix of particles really, for the most part, being kicked out here. Um, and the first thing we're starting with is our red stream, which is our fluid pour. And then we're going to switch to our fill group. Now, right now, we're emitting from this uh, plane here the pour particles, right? So these are pouring down into this vessel. But when I get down to the corner here where we're getting our contact here in the corner where we're going to start to basically fill up the glass here. I'm going to change these particles into our fill group. So an easy way to do that is to just basically take a, a point helper like this, which is our distance point helper. I'm going to put that down in the corner of this glass right around where these particles are hitting. Something like that. Perfect. And that's going to be our test essentially to say, okay, when these particles get within that range of that, you're going to switch to this group here. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And the way to do that, there's many ways to do it. Uh, one way we're going to do it is we're going to go ahead and create a couple of things here. So I want to go from this group to this group. So what we're going to do is we're going to create under operators, under standard, we're going to create a group. Okay. We're going to create a node. So let me hit tab and type in node because we need a node assignment. The node is actually going to be our distance point here. Okay, So we're going to then say, OK, if our pore particles are basically between a certain radius of their position and this object's position, we're going to send them to the fluid fill group. Okay, So that's what we're going to do. So all we need to do now is actually add in a group. So fluid pour, this is what we're starting with. So let's move these up here. So we're going to change uh, the output here. We're going to add the particle position. And we're going to do a, a distance test, so a condition here. Let me right click and do conditions. We're going to go from distance. All right, so we're going to say the particle position of, it can be position one or two, it doesn't really matter. So the fluid that's pouring into the glass, we're going to check the distance between that and our node's position. And if you're between uh, this radius value that we type in here, so I'll give it a value of 20, uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to turn on this group assignment. So under input visibility, I'm going to turn the little option here for on. And we're going to connect this to on. okay. And the particle group here, we're going to connect that to our fluid pour, because that's the group that we're testing here. okay. So essentially what we're saying is between this particles, 
these particles position and the nodes position, check this radius here. If it's true, go ahead and now turn the fluid pore particles into this group called fluid fill. So if I play this down now, we should see a color switch happening here, and we do. And that's exactly what we want. Now what's cool about this, and the way flow group works, is we can have more than one flow group being solved by the same solver. Okay, so we're using the same solver. Uh, but now these particles down here uh, with this fluid can have a completely different set of properties, which is kind of cool. And this is really what we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and move this down below just so we can kind of see this. Okay, so now our fluid particles that are being filled up here, we want them to really fill this container. And to do that, we need to make some adjustments here to its properties. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to actually bring up the smoothing radius and my decompress. So if I play this down now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the smoothing radius to 5. And then our decompress, I'm going to bring this up to 10. And what I'm also going to do here, play that down. Cool. So we start to see that we're really starting to kind of fill up the container. Um, what I want to do is I want to fill it up a little bit more. So let me actually bring up our smoothing radius to 10. And I'll bring up our decompress here to, to 20. There we go. OK, so now we're really starting to fill up this glass. OK, so the idea behind this is that now it's really controllable because the stream, the incoming stream that we're pouring the fluid out, it's, it's going to interact with this fluid because they're being solved together. So you know it's not like you're going to see any kind of weird transitional moment. Um, and the, the blue particles are going to be the one that we want to use to fill up the container. And the way that we're doing it this way, it makes it really easy to really dial in the behavior here because, first of all, the stream that you're doing, if you want to actually take a, a cup and pour it into another cup and just see how long it takes to fill the glass, um, you can do that, and then that way you can actually control how fast this fluid is filling up um, because this is 24 frames a second. So if it takes two to three seconds to fill the cup, you can easily kind of judge that by playing this down and adjusting your decompress setting. You can adjust your smoothing radius and so on to kind of figure out, okay, my glass at let's say three or four seconds should be almost to the top of the glass. As long as you dial in the speed of, um, of your particles coming out so that they're timed correctly based on you know your reference. So if I'm pouring a glass and I'm seeing that it takes you know a second to get down to the bottom of the glass to hit the corner, I want to make sure that my speed here is correct. And then how fast is it filling up the glass is another speed that I want to adjust, which I can adjust easily, as you saw, with the decompressed setting and my smoothing radius. So this is a quick way for you to actually be able to fill up uh, a container and control it. And obviously, uh, you can do uh, more controls than this. So let's take this just a little bit further um, as well. So let me go back to the beginning here. And let's add a little bit of foam particle action here as well. So let's create a group here, uh, and let's add it underneath here. Actually, add it underneath our gravity. And we'll call this foam, because that's what we're going to generate, foam. And in our gravity under forces, we're going to make a group, not a group, but we're going to make its own force. So let me copy this for our foam, paste that in switch this to our foam group and let's just lower the foam group a little bit so like 350 okay so that should be good enough let's go back to our fluid groups and we want to generate foam on the filling up so we go down here to our foam and let's switch the group to foam and turn that on and uh, let's go ahead and play that down so we'll see some foam being generated okay there we go uh, and the one thing about this is, I'll pause this for a second, is I'll zoom in here a bit, is um, you know what you'll want to do is you'll want to kind of control this in a way where if this was going to be uh, more than just bubbles filling up in a cup, because if you're pouring in some Gatorade or water into a cup, you want to you know have some bubbles and stuff like that. This is a good way to do it um, because you can control the lifespan of them. And um, what you can also do is 
You can also put in tests because if your foam uh, rises above the surface, you can then basically uh, delete them uh, as if the bubbles that hit uh, break the surface, um, you know, pop. You know, you can do that, which is kind of cool. So this is a cool way for adding in uh, those bubbles into a cup just by adding foam. Now, if you're talking about doing a, a cup pour like this using uh, beer where the foam is actually going to need to be rising on top, what you can do is you can actually change some of the parameters, um, um, parameters of uh, your foam to, to generate that. First of all, uh, if I wanted this to be more like beer foam, what I would do is I would give this actually higher value of its lifespan so that they live longer. Um, the next thing that I'd want to do is I'd want to make sure that uh, the gravity was a little lighter so they actually want to rise and actually you know make it on top of the blue particles so let's go to our gravity for our foam group and let's just bring this down to 300 and i'll play this down again and so now those particles are going to be more or less you know higher uh, in the simulation you know because they don't have the gravity, the same amount of gravity force pulling them down. Uh, so that's one thing. Next, if I go back here to our forces, not the forces, sorry, go back to our fluid groups here. So with our fluid groups, I want to go down to our fluid fill here and take a look at the parameters that we have set here. Um, so we have at the top our decompressed set to 10, and down below we're just using the default here. Uh, properties which has a decompress of one. So when I play this down we're going to want to adjust our decompress a bit here so that we can get our particles to be more or less on top of the surface or above the blue particles. So I'll just bring this up a little bit. I don't want it as high as the blue particles though because I don't want them to fill up too much here so maybe I'll do value of four something like that. And uh, I'll go ahead and restart the sim, and I'll play this down. So by adjusting this, basically the same you know parameters that we adjusted for our blue particles, I'm doing the same thing for the foam. But keep in mind again, the foam is a little bit lighter, so it's going to want to you know rise higher and, and remain you know more or less on top of the fluid. Uh, so it's a good way for you to kind of control this if you wanted to have you know a set of foam on top of your liquid uh, in case of like you know, beer foam, stuff like that. Uh, this is a good way to do it. And of course, um, after this starts to settle here, I'll just pause this. Uh, these particles are dying out, so if I was going to do um, sort of the beer foam, I would want to create my lifespan to be really long, and what I would want to do is control it. It's kind of the same way we're doing with this distance helper. What I would want to do is I'd want to make another point helper up here, so that way the ones that were close to this point helper would die off, so I wouldn't have to worry about them, first of all, spilling out of the top of my container or my glass. And then I could also animate this if I wanted to, sort of pop a few of the bubbles and just remain a little bit of that foam on the top action. And the simple way to do that is the same way we kind of did this one as well, using a, a, a distance test as well. Um, so in this case, if I go back here to frame zero and I make the lifespan a lot longer um, than our particles that are generating the foam, uh, they won't die out. Um, and we're not creating that many particles. Uh, we have a cap here of 10,000. So that's kind of our cap here. But if we wanted to, we could do the same thing, like I was saying, is use a distance test here. So if they started to get uh, to a certain level of the glass, uh, matter of fact, let's do that. Let's actually make them get a little bit unruly. So to do that, let's, um, let's make our decompress a little bigger here to five, and let's also change our gravity. So they're just a little bit 250, very light particles. Um, and then this way, you know, they're really rising up to the top and going to be definitely more of these particles getting out of hand, as we can see here. And so to control that, uh, we can use the distance test to kind of kill off some of the ones up here. And I want this to actually spill out of the glass. So let's do that. Let's get this to actually spill out of the glass. So let's actually add um, speed threshold to be lower. So that's going to generate a lot more foam. And with more foam, we're going to get more activity. And I want them to actually get 
pretty tall here at the top. Um, come on, there we go. Right. A little bit further. So let me create a little, f uh, few more particles. So let's do, instead of capping it at 10,000, let's cap it at 20. And let's do a rate of 40. Uh, I want to see them actually spill out of the top of the cup or the glass container, whatever you want to call it. Um, see if I can do that here. And I don't want to go too crazy with the, the compression here, but um, I might have to bring that up. So let's do at the bottom here our decompress of let's do six, and that is going to for sure make these overflow the glass. And that's kind of what I want. So that already reached to the top of this crest, so this one that shoots up over here should reach out of the glass. There we go. Okay. So that's what I want. I wanted to see that. Um, so this is where we're getting this really active foam on top of the glass. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill off the ones that are within range of this guy here. So to do that, it's very simple. We can just basically copy what we did here below. And so we're going to create another dynamic set. So before the sim, so let's go ahead and create a new dynamic set and move it above sim. Actually move it above forces. And we're going to call this... Um, uh, let's call it kill foam because that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to go and grab our same setup here. So we're going to grab all of this stuff here. So let me do this. And let's copy it and go to our kill foam and paste it in. And essentially what we're doing here is we're going to use a different set of objects. So what we're going to use instead of this point helper down below, we're going to use the one up here called call this foam killer. There we go. And what we'll do is we'll just pick that node. And instead of our pore group, we're going to be checking against the foam group. Okay, and that's basically the same thing. But we're going to move it into a new group. Well, actually, we're not going to move it into a group, we're going to actually kill the particles. So we're going to actually add a particle die. So if I hit tab here and type in particle, and we see particle die operator, that's what we want. And we're doing the same thing. We're, instead of sending it to a group, we're going to kill off the particles. And I'm going to go ahead and do the input visibility for on. And I'll disconnect these by hitting shift and clicking on the title. And that will get rid of that connection. And then I'll alt right click and that will delete it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the output to the on of our particle die. And we're going to drag our particle connection to our foam. And so now when these particles get within a range, I'm going to make this range pretty big here. Let's do 100. This way we can really see that these particles are going to die when they get within range of this. And it's only the foam particles, right? Because we wouldn't want the, the red stream of particles to die. And as you can see already, because I have such a large range, these particles are being killed already. Anything that's really close to this. So if I bring this down even further, we're going to have no foam particles probably. Go back here to the beginning here. Where we're not really going to see much for foam because they're going to be killed off because they're so close to this one. So I'm just going to bring this up here and we're going to bring this down to let's say 20. So this is a good way for us to control when the particles get up to the top they start to die off um, which is cool because you can control that. Um, what you can also do is you can see they're really getting just killed off there like that. So what I can do is I can actually increase my radius. So let's do 40. So what I want to see is them where they kind of start to die off, like right around here. So this is my level, essentially. So what I can do is I can then give it a value when they die to like die within a certain amount of frames. That way it doesn't look so, uh, so direct as if we just took a plane and just laid it right here and just killed them off with like, you know, a slice or something. So to make it look a little bit more natural, what we're going to do is we're going to say, go ahead and die off in two frames, and we'll give it a 50% 50, 50 variation. Uh, that way we know we have a, a bigger range of when they're going to start to die, and then we can control how many frames it takes them to die. And the reason for that is that way we can kind of control the ones that get pretty close to the top, but then they, they die off, as we can kind of see there. And you know the ones that arise up here, they still don't get quite to the top before we kill them off. So we can actually 
play with that a little bit more. We just want it to look natural, and this is a good way to do it. Uh, it's a good way to control then also too, as you can see, uh, the particles that get beyond the, the top of the glass. So it's a way for you to control that as well. And so that's an easy way to do it, easy way to grab a, a, you know, a quick setup like this. And again, I started with uh, the black box that I made available in the other tutorial, um, which is the flow base group. Quickly modified it. We didn't need any of the bullet stuff, and we're able to do a simple pour test like this. Um, and again, keep in mind that this is, you know, four to five times uh, the size of a normal glass uh, doing this kind of simulation. So if you want to do a simulation uh, similar like this, where you want to fill up a glass uh, or some kind of container, you're going to want to scale up your container after you model it uh, to the proper scale. Um, yeah, so there you go. Quick way to do um, fills of glasses and pouring objects using Thinky Particle 6. Um, so that's it. Hope you enjoy.